What's up, Brian Tong here, and welcome to the Apple Buy for all the good and bad inside the world of Apple, plus a special giveaway. So let's get to the show, and it's not the biggest news week with a few updates on all the latest rumored products, but a report from the China Times claims that Taiwan-based touch panel manufacturer TPK will be making flexible displays for the iWatch with mass production expected in the second half of the year. The report says the iWatch will come with a flexible AMOLED display and 3D protective glass and will use silver nanowire touchscreen technology that's developed by TPK. Now, they aren't the most reputable source, but that's the latest in the iWatch world. More reports continue to piggyback on the belief that we'll see two different sized iPhones, but the latest from Taiwan's Economic Daily News claims that only the larger of the two iPhones will use the sapphire glass and the rumored smaller but still larger than the original iPhone, that 4.7 inch model, will continue to use Corning's Gorilla Glass like the iPhone 5S and 5C. Then the Economic Daily News decided to get a little cray cray and claims that Apple will not name the larger 5.5 inch plus device an iPhone because Apple is treating it like an experimental project and will not use the iPhone name. Now that makes me lean towards them naming it the iPad Mini Mini, but come on, I doubt they have any idea about the way Apple will be marketing these rumored devices. Also a report from Fudzilla says Apple will still stick to keeping their next A-series processor and Qualcomm's LTE chips separate for the next round of iOS devices. Integrating the two typically helps optimize battery life, but it looks like that will be another generation away. KGI Securities also released a report that indicates Apple will keep most of their products with the same processor except for the next iPhone, which historically has taken the lead when it comes to new processors in their product line. Now, no surprise there. And the rumored full-size iPad would also be a candidate for a new 8.8 chip. And more news about the Apple TV. Apple Insider has done some digging and has found that Apple has posted several new positions for the Apple TV team related to expanding content on its set-top box, new positions for an Apple TV content partner engineer, and an Apple TV software QA engineer showed both roles hint at expanded third-party support. And we've already talked about reports pointing to a new Apple TV, possibly by April this year. All right, it's always cool to check out some of the patents Apple has been working on. And recently, they've been granted what's described as a sports monitoring system for headphones, earbuds, and headsets. Now, the key to this invention would be sensors embedded into one or more areas of the headset or earbuds by coming into contact with your skin. The sensors would potentially be able to measure your heart rate, temperature, perspiration, and other physical stats. It's basically a health monitoring system for headsets. It looks really cool, but unfortunately, they won't be able to use the name Heartbeats by Dre. All right, on to the quick bites. Apple's bringing the iTunes Festival to America for the first time at South by Southwest. Coldplay, Imagine Dragons, and Pitbull will be some of the featured performers, but no word if Ilvis will be performing. What the fuck, Okay, I'm done. And a cool story from CNET's own Daniel Turdeman, where the TV show Diggers found the time capsule from the Aspen International Design Conference in 1983. Now, at the conference, Jobs gave a talk and predicted things like the iPad, wireless networking, and even the App Store long before they became a reality. Now, the time capsule included the Lisa Mouse. Steve Jobs used it during his talk, along with other miscellaneous items that were thrown in it, and it was dubbed the Steve Jobs time capsule. So, check out this clip. So, I look in the tube. There's a little plastic bag in there. I reach in, I grab it. Look. I, I mean, I kind of let go of it because I, I panicked like it was like a hot stove. Oh. Couldn't be. There it is! Yeah! Now, the time capsule had a strong moldy stench, but even Steve knew that that thing would be priceless and put it in a baggie. He's smart. Now, if you want to watch the entire episode, it will air on February the 25th on the National Geographic Channel. All right, we've got another amazing giveaway for you from our friends at JBL. This is the hottest Bluetooth speaker out there right now called the JBL Pulse. I genuinely love it because it's super colorful. The sound quality is great for a speaker this size and you can control it with its own app. Now I can change its visuals from rainbow to club or to chill. It's seriously legit and you can even impress girls with it by just telling them it's magic. 
Wow, that is so cool. I know. How does it work? Ladies, it's magic. So, we're giving away three of these bad boys on the show. All you guys have to do is watch last week's episode and tell us how many times I say the word me during my warm-ups and then add that to the number of pipes I get through on Flappy Bird. See, this isn't easy and it's not gonna be if we're giving away JBL pulses, son. Email me at the at CNET.com or tweet me at Brian Tong and we'll randomly pick three of you. And you can also take advantage of their 10% off their entire website with the code JBLCNET and it's good through March the 7th. All right, that's gonna do it for this week's show. I'm Brian Tong, thanks for watching and we'll catch you guys next week for another bite of the apple.